we're going to get into this MCU fuck budget. The Marvel Cinematic Universe established 2008. Still going strong? We'll see. No. First off, <laughs> Jacob, I'll start with you. Fuck okay. budget. The first topic, Deadpool and Wolverine, the latest entry okay. into the MCU, the highest grossing yeah. R-rated movie of all time. How many fucks do you give? Oh, wow. Um, I gave it two. I gave it two fucks. I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was really great. I've watched some clips on YouTube of people filming it with their phones, which I don't condone that. But uh, no, there's been controversy about that. Um, I, I, it's a movie I kind of want to watch again. Um, I give it two, almost two confused fucks because I, I really loved. I, I had a great time. I really loved it, and I was really, really happy to see so many like weird deep cut references that were things I never would have thought would have been on film. But in thinking about the movie, part of me has been like, what was it about? You know what I mean? And I, and I, and I'm, I'm doing that thing where I'm like, I need to go see it again because part of me is like, so I was so excited for all the crazy stuff that was happening that it's like, did all that stuff kind of overshadow, you know, the rest of the, the actual plot of the movie. And like, I, I would never say it was a, a, that I thought the movie was bad or not fun or anything. I, I, I thought it was great. Deadpool. All, they're all three great films, but it's like, there was almost a little too much, you know, fan service and crazy shit happening that it like makes you not look at the movie critically because you don't have time to, you know what I mean? So now when I'm out of the movie, I'm like, it was pretty convoluted here or this didn't make any sense or this was only done so they could put the, you know what I mean? So like part of me is having those thoughts where I'm like, Oh, I I need to go see it again. Um, But also part of me doesn't care. Because right. uh, Wolverine was awesome, and 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 you know all the other Wolverines that popped up were really cool, and I so yeah, I don't know. So yeah, I want I wanted to ask you specifically before we get to Abby. I know we we're all big fans of the movie Logan, and we were a little bit concerned, like, okay, Logan's dead. You're gonna undo that. Yeah. Um, it's it's explained early on through a very funny sequence of. Uh, Deadpool uh, using <laughs> Logan's decayed bones. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Wolverine in this movie is not the Logan that we knew and loved from the original X-Men universe, which I was surprised. I guess I wasn't expecting that for some reason. I just wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I was a big, I, I said it a lot, you know, on this show that I didn't like that they were bringing Hugh Jackman back because for one, Logan was great. And that was a good send off, not just for that character, but for Hugh Jackman specifically as that character. And also like Marvel is doing this really weird thing right now where, you know, they've been teasing mutants and X-Men joining the MCU for years and years now. And now it seems like it's, that's on their back burner and they're not even mentioning it anymore. And I would rather have a new Wolverine and the X-Men join the MCU for real instead of like random um, appearances of the Fox X-Men in these right. movies. Uh, but it's like I, I would rather them not do that. But also the movie was great. So mm-hmm. it's like I can't be too mad about it, especially if like if they're not going to get around to mutants for another couple of years then what's the harm in it? Right. Um, Mm -hmm. But it does leave a little bit of a damper on Logan for me, bringing him back, even though it's not the same Wolverine. That's not the point. Right. It is Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. So there's a little bit of that, but it's not so bad. All right, Abby, I'll go to you. And I do want to say the, the post credit scene from the Marvels that featured uh, beast. It has been confirmed that that is the same universe as the Logan from Deadpool and Wolverine. It takes place before that, like two years. So that beast is dead. Um, uh, All right. Confirmed. Uh, Abigail. (laughs) Yeah. Hey. Um, Okay. So for this, I easily gave this film five fucks. Um, So that's a lot. And I understand it. But I base 
my experience on the emotions that are elicited while I'm in the theater, the way that feeling carries me the next couple of days, whether or not I think about it. Um, and I have to say, like, despite this movie taking place in kind of a loophole timeline just to make it happen. I was there for it from the beginning. Um, there's just, I, Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool is probably my favorite superhero. It's my favorite character. Like based, I love the first one. I love the second one. Um, I love his relationship um, with, I can't remember the, the girlfriend's name, but um, I, there's something about Vanessa. him, Vanessa, about like the struggle that he goes through the pain that he goes through and the trauma just to like acquire his skills and like the not giving a fuck about anything like sense of humor. Um, I just relate to it and I really love him in that role. And I also really love uh, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and I loved Logan and it was tough. I remember Jacob, you sent us pictures of your tears, like in a selfie, like it was a really in hard a jar. Job. He saved them <laughs> <laughs> Keep them by my bedside. No, um, it's, it was a. Uh, it was something that um, that movie was significant. It got me even more into X Men. And over the last year, two years, um, three years, maybe I, I've gotten into X Men, the animated series um, with X Men ninety seven coming out. I just am like foaming at the mouth for Wolverine and for any connection to X Men. Um, so yeah, having two super charismatic, hot dudes like giving each other shit and like succeeding and bonding like. It's a it's it's my recipe. Like I, I love that. I am so here for the homoerotic jokes and all of that shit. Like I fucking love that. People are so I be, I love the people that are getting mad. I've seen I've seen people be like, well, went to a Disney movie with my kids and had to leave because they won't stop saying fuck and making gay jokes. And I'm like, had to explain pegging to my kids. Like, hey, <laughs> you're gonna find out. At some point. Um, Did, never thought I was going to go to an a, a MCU movie and hear the word cunt. <laughs> was a, it was what a variation. It was a variation. Hey, of cunt. I would and do a George cunt. Lucas. I would start putting cunt in all the old movies. Hey, yeah, make, that a, make that a character's name. Cunt's the new walkie talkie. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear Steven Spielberg was editing E.T.? Yeah, he put cunts in it. Oh. Good, good, good. Fucking We're the yes. guardians of the cunt galaxy. I so love the movie well. for being sorry. <sighs> I have to I have to say serious things. It, I love them the movie for being unapologetically about the bonds that are formed um almost like begrudgingly between friends where it's like, mm -hmm. well, these are the fucking people I'm stuck with. May as well love them. And that is the essence of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. And this movie had that to so many degrees. It also had a female villain, uh, which I found to be like very menacing and also at the same time uh, interesting and like dynamic. And uh, like there's a chance because is she the cousin of Xavier? Is she the sister? Twin. 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 Sister. Twin there you go. Yeah. Twin. That's, that's interesting to me to see mm -hmm. like how a familial tie breaks and cool. i know jacob you mentioned like it's in a a world that's like does it really matter is this like what is this i i don't at that point i just want to be around them so bad that i don't care what kind right. of leaps we have to yeah do. I, the thing yeah. the I, I i agree with everything you said abby and i and i do think the movie's great and fun and it will it will be a, a rewatch it's just like it took me a couple days coming out of it before i started being like uh, what the fuck is a time ripper? What the fuck is an anchor being? Why did the villain, why did she let them go at one point yeah. just to come back? And I was just like, oh, there's so many of those weird little annoying things in the movie that are all specifically like just so they can have a reason to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. It's fine. It's ultimately it's fine. You know, right. It doesn't matter. It's like the payoff is that comic book. Yeah, it's a comic book movie. And because of that, it's like I can either get annoyed at those things or I can shut up and watch Gambit on in right. live action. So well, it's like, yes. Oh, my God. I just got so excited to remember that. <laughs> like, I, that's why I need to go. I have the desire to go back to the movie theater and watch this. Like, I, yeah, I'll probably I might see iconic. it again, yeah. Real Shit quick, you hadn't get, you haven't been able to see, and then you finally do. And we're still early it. in the fuck budget, but I think this is a really good discussion. So, lots of cameos in this movie. Some expected, some not. Just running them down off the top of my head. Chris Evans back as Johnny Storm, which was really great. I thought that was really well played. Very mm -hmm. funny. Um, Channing Tatum, Gambit, finally, probably the one and only time. Although it's so well received, I won't be surprised to see Gambit 
come back for Secret Wars or whatever. Make up a d- another dumb loophole timeline. I don't care. I would watch that. Uh, Wesley Snipes is Blade. Um, and uh, Jennifer Garner is Electra. X-23 was back. And it was just a lot of fun. Like, and, and it's like, if you can sit, the funny thing is, is that once the movie was over and they wrapped it up, they're kind of back in that universe. And it doesn't feel all that impactful to the MCU as a whole right. going forward, because we already know about the multiverse saga. We already know kind of where it's going. I think fantastic four from the little that we know about it is going to be very impactful. And we'll get into that maybe a little bit later. So mm-hmm. overall, Loved it. I'm not allocating fucks. I get as many as I want, so I'll give it 25. And um, no, it was cool. I can't wait to see it again. But the question I always ask myself after watching one of these movies is, how did this happen with Ryan Reynolds? How did Van Wilder pull this career off? I just don't get it. I, you just have to do the same thing. Whenever, whenever I have questions about this movie that kind of don't make sense to me, like the anchor being stuff can anchor beings, you can pull in an anchor being from another universe. And, and now it's fine because you stole a Wolverine. That doesn't make any sense. Um, (laughs) Does Wolverines, is he the anchor being in his universe or no? Because if he is, wouldn't that universe fall? I don't know. Is X-23 the same X-23 from Logan? Right, right. Or no? I, yeah. Okay. You have to just not <laughs> think about it. Or you just have to be like, no, it's a comic book relax. movie. It doesn't it's matter. It's a show. 90% yeah. of Wolverines in every universe are Hugh Jackman. One is Henry Cavill. Well, that's uh, always, that is always been. That's a thing. Uh, a pro- annoying thing to me with the MCU is is that they you know doctor strange is doctor Str- it's 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 it looks like him in every fucking universe but you know we see mr fantastic is the fucking gym from the office and now he's they they just do whatever they want you know there's no rules and now he's jim from the mandalorian Jim Mandalorian. All right, let's uh, get into this. Abby, I'll start with you. The big reveal at the end of uh, the Hall H panel, Robert Downey Jr. Next topic, are we doing number two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I figured. Robert Downey Jr. is back in the MCU officially. He snapped Thanos out of existence back at the end of 2019 in Endgame as Iron Man. And now he's back as Dr. Doom before anybody tells you they know what this means or how it's going to go. They don't. They don't know if it's a Tony Stark variant. They don't know if it's just Victor Von Doom. They, they don't know. We'll know in two years. Having said that, Abigail, how do you feel about Robert Downey Jr. returning to the MCU? And this is exactly verbatim what I wrote down. One fuck, I guess. Um, I just... <laughs> It's a, you know, okay, so yeah, Robert Downey Jr., great actor, brings gravity and an amazing performance to a film. So yeah, good. That's good. And also, do I miss old Marvel a little bit? Yeah, I do. So it would be nice to see some familiar faces. But I am not familiar with the Doctor Doom storyline enough to like have a justified answer as to whether this works or this doesn't work. Um, mm. I'm just giving it the one fuck to be like, okay, if they're trying to improve things, this could improve. It could also just be like, look at the thing you used to love. Who knows? I don't know sure. how it's going to go. Yeah. That's an astute observation on all fronts. I really enjoyed that. One of your better fuck budgets I've ever heard. Um, Thank you. Jacob. Hey, I, I also gave it two fucks, but they're like two really confused fucks because at the time, at the time it was an exciting thing. And I was like, well, that's a bit, we talked about it. It, well, it leaked, you know, it was rumored. Leaked, right. Right. And right. me and you had a conversation about it. I think, you know, a couple days before comic con or something and how crazy of a swing that would be if that were true, but it seems like something they would never try to do. So then when you found out they did do that, at first you're like, holy fuck, that's insane. But then the more you think about it, it's like, why? Why? Because if he's not a Tony Stark variant, then why would he look like Robert Downey Jr. at all? Also, Dr. Doom doesn't take his mask off ever. That's his defining characteristic is that he can't take his fucking mask off. Um, You know, so maybe Robert Downey Jr., you know, you see him before he gets to the point where he's wearing a mask. I don't know. It seems like a really weird thing to do. Are there not other actors out there that could play Dr. Doom? Yeah, of course there are. So why recycle 
you know, somebody that was the biggest star of the MCU because the movies are falling apart and not doing well. And you just feel a need to, it's like stunt casting. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But it could be cool. So I don't want to say anything like Deadpool was great. The, the trailer, you know, for the new captain America looks very promising, like things that are, are coming up that we're hearing about. It's all kind of promising. So it, it's, I'm really hoping that they're turning it back around and maybe, the next couple of things that are happening are going to be good. And maybe Dr. Doom will be awesome. Um, right. But all of my fucks are kind of low because it's just how I feel about the MCU right now. It's just like, right. it's such a, in the hate, in the words of Deadpool, it's at a low point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Kind of excited about it. Cautiously optimistic. I mean, I have a feeling it will relate somehow back to Tony Stark in some kind of way. Yeah as they close out the multiverse uh, saga, um, I'm assuming we'll see Dr. Doom in a post credit scene for fantastic four. Uh, the fantastic four footage from comic con did leak. It keeps getting posted and take it down. We're not going to talk about it, but it looks cool. I, seen it. I, seen I, it. Have it I watched it. I'm, Abby, I'll find yeah. it for you, cool. but that, and it's just a teaser that they made for comic con. Um, <laughs> Cause it just started filming, right? The aesthetic, the like retro future aesthetic, Jetson style, 1960s. I love it. I'm all about it. I really like the cast. So again, this will lead us into our next item. Jacob, I'll go to you. Joe and Anthony Russo, the architects of the most successful portion of the MCU, starting with Winter Soldier into Civil War, and then both Avengers movies, Infinity Game and Infinity Game, <laughs> Infinity War and Endgame. Uh they have been looking for a director. They've done some shuffling. The Kang dynasty. What did I tweet? Kang of the shortest dynasty. Uh, yeah. Russo's are back for these two Avengers movies. How many fucks do you give? Uh, one. <laughs> I just I don't really care. Um, this is also uh, stunt directing. Uh, you know, this is like, hey, Marvel. It's literally everything I just said about Robert Downey Jr. Marvel Universe and the movies are falling apart. They're not doing well. Deadpool made more money in one day than their last theatrical movie did in its entire run. Sure. That is not crazy. Damn. Um, mm. So they're like, we have to get the Russos back. Um, and, you know, hopefully it's a good thing. But also, I just, I don't know, whatever. Like, I try I've gotten to a point with MCU where if I think about these things too much, I just make myself frustrated <laughs> because I'm yeah. like, all right, well, Dr. Doom's a fantastic four villain, but in the first fantastic four movie, we're going to get Galactus, which should be way bigger than just one movie. And then your next Avengers film is straight to, you know, Thanos, Thanos got years of buildup, right? Dr. Doom's not going to get any buildup. He's just going to have, an Avengers film built around him immediately. And then the next movie is secret wars, which is has to do with, with him, but not entirely. So it's like, I don't know, man, I just, I just hope they have a good plan and I hope they know what they're doing. And I, and I hope it's fun for right now. Uh, I'm just going to give it one fuck uh, or else I'll drive myself crazy. Yeah. I did read today that all of the Marvel and again, this is a rumor, but all of the Marvel shows and movies that happen in between the two Avengers movies will take place in battle world, uh, battle world being, uh, where the secret wars, mortal Kombat competition takes place. So, uh, that's my limited novice knowledge of comic book history coming right to the forefront. But okay. Abigail Russo's back. How many fucks do you give? Yeah. All right. I give two fucks for good writers um, because I think that good writing is important. I think that the Russo brothers have done uh, their track record is amazing uh, for making compelling stories that like highlight all the characters and their best ways and also are heartwarming and um, make you cry a little bit and funny. So I um I give this two fucks. I have the fucks to give. I'm allotting them. Um, I think one of the Russos may have come in and ate at the restaurant that I work at at some point on the patio. <laughs> yeah, you remember uh, that. I remember texting the group and I was like, y'all, I one of the Russos yeah. is sitting outside. Um, yeah, I went I went out and like tried to refill water, but he didn't need it. So I was just like, mm. <laughs> cool, cool guy. Um, then I went back in. Yeah. So I, I think it's good. It's good 
the writing and the story is the paramount. It's the most important thing to a movie, in my opinion. So um, good. I'm glad they brought the team back. Yeah, and the original writers. So Joe and Anthony directed those movies. They were ri- they were written by a team that they kind of their co conspirators, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. I don't know if they're both back or not. I kind of agree with you. I'm, I again, I'm, I'm on both sides of it. It's exciting to me because t- I can watch Infinity War and Endgame any day of the week. I think those movies are fucking awesome. I think they're mm-hmm. really well executed. They're emotional. They're they're great. Action's great. All that stuff. Um it does feel a little bit like course correction and we know this wasn't the original plan and, but their track record of the MCU is really good. So I don't have any reason to doubt it. I agree Mm -hmm. with that. Um, Craig, I think um, now it's been a while since I've read a comic book, but I think maybe we can call Ryan. Maybe we can get Ryan on the phone. Um, I think Battle Ro- World is kind of like the whole Secret Wars thing. It's I feel like it's less of like a Mortal Kombat situation and is more of like like when I watch Deadpool and they're yeah. in the void and there's mm-hmm. like multiple versions of every you know how they're like, we've never had a Wolverine here before, you know, different right. versions. That's kind of like what Battle World is. There's like multiple versions of superheroes you know, right. on the planet at one time. And it's because it's like a world that's sort of accidentally created from all these weird instances. Yeah, I'm on the wiki right now. Battle I'm, world. I'm, I'm sure they're changing it up because they it can't be the void because they just gave us that. They just gave us the void, right? But, but when we were watching Deadpool, I was like, oh, this is kind of like the secret Wars like thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, this is what I was... So, Battle World, patchwork world made from remnants of destroyed realities following the multiverse's collapse from the incursions created by Doctor Doom, uh, yada, yada, yada. We know Secret Wars, and then I think what I was thinking of is uh, known as the Contest of Champions, which I believe is part of Secret yeah, Wars. Yeah, probably. Um, so, hey, sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, we'll yeah. see if they pull it off. Um, okay, starting with you. Is it back to you, Abigail? Yeah, you started with Jake the last two times if you want to start with me. Stick with MCU. Once again, the rumors are here again. This happens every couple of years. Tom Cruise rumored to play an Iron Man variant in Secret Wars. The same Tom Cruise that is going to be skydiving into the closing ceremonies of the Olympics this weekend. <laughs> Onto what? a couch. You didn't hear about this? No. So I, the, that's, the, that's the only thing I want to talk about because I don't give a fuck about this. The next, so funny. the next Olympics are in Los Angeles and this one's in Paris. So Tom Cruise is doing a big stunt to officially welcome the Olympics back to the United States. And what I said is the only way to make it even better is if he skydives in and then the lights go off, spotlight. Who's that in the middle of the field? Wes Borland. That's right. Lip Biscuit is playing. Because <laughs> what better way to walk up the people Olympic- in the world today? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> my way, my way, or the highway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's. <laughs> oh, they play a whole concert. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be awesome. Yes. But anyways, we'll see what happens. Uh, Abigail, Tom Cruise, Iron wanna- Man, my way or the highway. <laughs> I give this zero fucks. <laughs> Just, I mean, I already said I didn't give a fuck. Um, what I wrote down was, please become an al- a celestial alien or whatever Scientology teaches you, Tom Cruise, because I don't want to see you in movies anymore. Um, so you don't understand thing. Scientology. You, know, you can be I a Christian do. and be a Scientologist. I don't want to. Yeah. Right. Um, I just, yeah, I, I don't, I don't love him as a, a human being. I think he's entertaining and has like really chaotic energy. Um, but yeah, no, I don't want him in the MCU. All right. In any way, shape, or form. I okay. guess maybe I'm thinking about the dark universe too much, and like that makes me <laughs> feel like I'm like Tom you always Cruise. Always are. Curse. Yeah. yeah. Jacob. So yeah, I think zero fucks easy. Um, I also gave it zero fucks because I don't think this is a real rumor. I don't think there's any substantial anything for it. Nor do I think the last um Tom Cruise in the MCU thing was real. I just think it people thought it was cool and it was born out of like a meme. It was born out of like weird photoshops where people imagined what the Avengers movies would have looked like in the nineties. And then it just turned, whenever they started doing multiverse stuff, people were just like, 
hey, maybe Tom Cruise, you know, just turned into a thing. I don't think that was ever a real thing. And mm-hmm. and this is just because they're like, hey, Dr. Doom is going to be Robert Downey Jr. So that means there's got to be a, a Tony Stark in that universe, right? That's maybe nice. it's Tom Cruise. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it's I don't think this is a real I don't think there's anything to back this up. And if there is, don't tell me there is because I want to sound like I'm, I feel like you're looking it up right now, Craig. And you're like, Nope, real thing. Somebody said it. No, um, I mean, no, I just think I saw it's the fake. rumor. The yeah. Rumor but it's, I, but I don't think it, the, uh, you know, it's not the origins like, of the rumor. Aren't it's even not real. from a substantial source. It's yeah. just somebody said, Hey, I bet Tom Cruise is going to be in it. And he's <laughs> cut done. to three years from now. We're watching secret wars. Tom Cruise shows up and I stand up and go Dude. wrong. Isn't Tom Cruise like almost eighty or something? He's <laughs> getting old. He he can't be something. He can't mm-hmm. be. Yeah. He can't. No. Zero yeah, I don't give fucks to rumors. Um, no. Proof that Tom Cruise has a heart. Okay, <laughs> guys, I would like to see Tom Cruise in the MCU. What, what, what can I say? All right, number five, the last. We touched on this a little bit earlier, but the last piece of the fuck budget this week. Jacob Walsh. Yeah. Mutants teased at San Diego Comic-Con 2019 <laughs> along with Fantastic Four. We're yeah. finally getting Fantastic Four in mm-hmm. 2025, but with Secret Wars and Doomsday ahead, it doesn't look like we will see an X-Men movie in the MCU at the earliest till 2028, meaning 20 years after the start of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. When it comes to no X-Men in the MCU and having to wait another four years. How many fucks do you give? I gave it the rest of my fucks. Five annoyed, hateful fucks. The hateful fucks. The okay. hateful fucks. Uh, it's so annoying. And and I and I think Marvel has kind of, uh, I think they figured it out. And I was kind of surprised that they didn't, uh, on their panel at uh, Comic-Con, that they didn't have the big... Uh, you know, calendar and uh, plotted out what right. the movies are for the next yeah. five years because they think they have finally learned that that is a bad model because they can never live up to it. Never. Nope. It never, it never comes out like they say it was. So they Strike, were like, pandemic, so they were, blade. <laughs> yeah. So they were like, Hey, we're only going to tell you about three things. And two of those things are already filming. So right. <laughs> or, or filmed yeah. or all three of them yeah. actually. So, so, yeah, so the fact that they are not even mentioning mutants anymore, um, it's so annoying. And I I 100 percent think um, Hugh Jackman is going to be Wolverine in at least one more film. I You know, there's of course he winds up in Secret Wars, maybe not in Doomsday, but Secret Wars is going to have Deadpool and Wolverine in it. It just is. Yep. And I like whatever. If that's the only X-Men we're going to get for however long then sure fine but it is so annoying to me that they announced it so long ago right and there's like you know been a few teases here and there but it's mainly fox stuff right so i'm hoping now that deadpool's out and they have officially put the fox universe you know behind them other than hugh jackman (laughs) then maybe they can maybe they can get something going here but so Wolverine is fucking annoying. Maybe, maybe uh, this Fantastic Four, you know, Fantastic Four are from a different universe, right? right? They're not. I know it's also takes place in the past, but I don't think. No, it's a six one. It's a not the six one six universe, yeah, right. right? So maybe the X Men exist in their universe, and they'll be like, uh, or maybe the yeah, maybe the, maybe they'll be like, hey, why don't you guys call the X Men? You know? Yeah, they, yeah. They could be like, wait, who are the X Men? <laughs> Like, I don't what know. Is, I'm just I'm annoyed. I will say it. this: Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, he has gotten better at that role over time, and I think there's a chance his performance in this last movie was was his best. I mean, he's yeah. just awesome. So, yeah. um, also with the amount of money it's making, won't be surprised if Deadpool and Wolverine two is out. You know, before <laughs> Secret Wars. So, hey, I I read a thing. I didn't read a thing. I watched a video with Ryan Reynolds where he said um, originally this movie was going to be called Deadpool and Friend. Yep. And they changed it the night before the Super Bowl because online it was getting really bad. People hated it. Right. So they, you know, the trailer came out with the Super Bowl and they were yeah. like, we have to change it. Yeah. I yeah. think that's funny. Yeah. And I think that's annoying that 
that people uh, that's one of my least favorite things when the test audience is like, oh, no, I don't get that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't get it. That would have been funnier. Abigail, and better. how many fucks? All right. Yeah. Much like Jacob here, I gave this um, two fucks. All the fucks I had left. Uh, two very spiteful, annoyed, hurt yeah. emo fucks, because I think as I've discovered X-Men over the last couple years here, I think they are the most compelling stories, the most relatable, the most important. Uh, I think that there's a ton of like um, like metaphor and uh, really great like social commentary, political commentary and shit that goes in behind the scenes of X-Men. But then there's also just like the fucking awesome romances and like interest and intrigue between really amazing, like flawed characters. And I just think it's so much better than Avengers. Um, I would love to see live action X-Men. I've been pining for it. I want to see rogue. I want to see what we saw from Deadpool and Wolverine was not enough. Um, So yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit pissed off much like you, Jacob. I just, I want to see in, and I don't, I want to have it explained. I don't like having things being kind of like swept under the rug and just not talked about ever again. Yeah. yeah. There you yeah. go. Um, that's it. All my I don't thoughts. want politics in my X-Men, you know? Um, <laughs> somebody online will say that. Oh, uh, yeah. I agree, oh, yeah. man. I, I'm excited. What what On the flip side, what, the, what excites me is we are approaching 20 years of the MCU and we're just now getting into Fantastic Four. We haven't even started with X-Men. So there's a really bright future. And also they haven't brought back Chris Evans as Captain America, which is what I'm personally waiting for because I'm a fan. Uh, no, let's not actually. Let's let let's let sleeping dogs lie, as they say, right? Let's create some new iconic characters and heroes. How about you want to grab him out of his like perfect timeline with his girl and everything, and yeah, we need you, Cap. Give him another story. Okay. I don't think I will. Um, I'm excited. MCU's got a bright future. Hopefully, I think they're making the right uh, the might the right moves to turn around. We still have some. You know, we've got the Witches of Eastwick. What's that show called coming up? <laughs> I don't know. Agatha Acolyte? all along. Not Ac- Ac- yeah, Agatha, Agatha oh, all along. I, I heard witches. Okay. Acolyte all along. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> There's something there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, we got the Agatha show coming. 